Welcome back to the Blue White Tailgate Show. Time to go inside the film room with Coach Jay Paterno. Coach, looking good, by the way. I like the white collar, but uh, we're not going to talk too much fashion here. We'll leave that for Saturday night with the Buckeyes in all black. But, Coach, number one team in the country. You're going on the road. I mean, I mean that's pretty much enough said. It's a tough, tough task, uh, to say the least. But let's take a look at the Ohio State defense to start. And what I want to talk about is the expectations for Ohio State coming in were very, very high, obviously, being the defending national champions. And people have a tendency to overlook the fact that they're actually performing better defensively this year than last year by significant numbers. Um, one of the guys that everybody likes to talk about is Joey Bosa. And people say he had 13 and a half sacks last year, only a half sack going into last week's game. What's the problem? Well, one of the things is it's been predictability and alignment. Ohio State is predominantly a boundary field defense, and, and Joey Bosa was lined up in the boundary quite a bunch, so people knew where to find him. Uh, when you take a look at the overshift the field, they put him in the boundary. Now, when we go to the next slide, you'll see what people are able to do with that. Because they know where he is, when you see the next slide, they can double him up. He's easy to find. So uh, Indiana was t blocking him with the tight end, helping him with the back off the, uh, off the edge to, so they, they knew where he was. You take a look what that does is that opens up a uh, situation for number 59, the other defensive end, who's got five and a half, six sacks already this season. Take a look at the video, and you'll see how Indiana does that. You see that tight end kind of grabs and holds. The back comes in and holds. And what that does is it opens up for the other guys to make plays. Now, what Ohio State has done, when you look at this past week, they actually took Bosa and they put him a defensive tackle on some third downs to get him on some guards, had some more success. The other thing you got to take advantage of with Ohio State is their aggressive blitz scheme. Here you see an overloaded blitz. You're going to see a very difficult blitz to pick up. But what Indiana does here is they're going to run a screen. We take a look at the video. The key to, be, to running screens effectively is getting between the pass rush and the coverage and inserting blockers. They do a nice job there, slows down their aggressiveness with their pass rush, and that, that's going to be something that they think about the rest of the game. The next thing we want to get to is we want to get into uh, their base coverage now. Take a look at their base coverage. We've seen this coverage quite a bit the last couple weeks. They're going to roll up on the corners, and the safety is going to key the number two receivers their side. One formation that you can take advantage of that is by getting the trips because there is no number two receiver to the boundary. So now that safety key is number three strong. When all that action goes that way, it leaves this corner one-on-one. -on -one. The key is can Penn State get into this formation, run the football away from the trips, as well as throw the ball. Take a look at the video, and you'll see Indiana's receiver gets one-on-one, -on -one, secondary rotates, they get inside on, unfortunately, he's not able to make the play, and they leave a nice play on, the, they leave some yards on the field there without making the catch. And, Coach, I think that's one thing that Coach Franklin brought up about the wide receiver separation. That's the throw that Christian Hackenberg and Deshaun Hamilton, they have to be on the same page, whoever the wide receiver is, because that's going to be a big play for the Penn State offense. No question. Now, flipping to Ohio State's offense, I think a couple words come to mind. Versatility and unselfishness. And what I mean by that is they've got guys that play all over the field and do the dirty work. The first guy I want to talk about, obviously, is Ezekiel Elliott, probably the best back in the country all around in my mind for all the things he does. The key for Penn State is going to be to take away the inside run game. Where the big plays have come for Elliott has been when they've come inside on here. They do a lot of man blocking inside, kick down. Take a look at the video. You'll see him come in. The key is going to be if you are in the secondary coming up to tackle on these, uh, on these inside runs, if you are one step off, he's gone. And this is not one shot. This is last year against Alabama, last year against Oregon, this year against Indiana, this year against everybody he's played. The other thing about Elliott, he's talk about unselfish. Let's take a look at him block. Not only does he run, he blocks too. Take a look at the video here. With the blitz coming off the side from last year, he goes in right there, cuts him, gets up and finishes the block off, allows him to make a play. Coach, you know I'm all about the cut block. I wish the Penn State backs would get a little bit more cut block in their scheme. Akeel Lynch still having nightmares over not cutting Joey Bosa, I by know. the way. I, don't worry. That's last year. Okay, now, the other thing you're going to see is you talk about versatility. Braxton Miller and Elliott both play wide out. Even though Elliott's a tailback, you're going to see him on this play come in motion. He's going to go out in the flat, and you're going to see Miller run the route. And again, they line him up a lot of different places. Take a look at how this one turns out on the video. Elliott comes in motion, forces Virginia Tech to pay attention to him. You get Braxton Miller downfield, one-on-one -on -one with the safety, and a big play happens. Again, those are the kind of things that unselfish players, great route here by, by uh, Braxton Miller making that play. Now, when you take a look at now, here's another situation. They take Miller from the slot. They motion in the backfield. When you go to the video, now you see him line up as a tailback and carry the ball inside. And again, another inside run. Again, he's able to make some things happen. 
and very, 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 very unselfish. They also line him up at quarterback, and you'll see what happens against Virginia Tech. He takes a direct snap, gets around the edge, a very nifty runner. Here's the obviously the spin move heard around the world. Nifty understatement on that run. That was hellacious. But you got three quarterbacks in this offense that are all going to play in this game, various positions, various different ways. And just the last thing we want to talk about as we move, talk about quarterback is the, the, how uh, Cordell Jones has matured. Here you're going to see in the screen, he's going to drop back to pass. Blitz comes off the edge. He steps inside, keeps his eyes downfield. You go to the video, you'll see how he keeps his vi eyes downfield, looks for the receiver, makes a play rather than just being a running quarterback. And that's the difference between him and last year. He would take off in those situations. Tons of matchups that you have to keep your eye on come Saturday. Coach, one matchup that you definitely got to look at. I think Penn State's defensive line is going to have to take away the inside run game because that's where they make their big plays. They're going to have to move around and create some blocking angles, destroy the blocking angles. He knows what he's talking about, Coach Jay Paterno. We send it back to Steve, Trey, and Todd as they break down the Penn State offense.